Windows PowerShell offers a way for you to make functions, called advanced functions, that behave almost identically to actual commandlets. This is done by adding a special form of declarations to the function itself, formally defining commandlet-like parameters. Your function's parameters can accept pipeline input, can be tagged as mandatory, can have data validation, and so on. These specialized functions enable more seamless integration with the pipeline, permitting a variety of pipeline input and output scenarios. Further, these functions support a special form of commenting that lets you define help file information. The shell can parse these comments on demand, creating a help page display that functions identically to the XML help files provided with commandlets. The easiest way to see these functions' definition in use is to jump in and make one. Here is a standard filtering function. Notice that the function is divided into three script blocks, begin, process, and end. In many cases, you will only use the process script block, and you can omit the other two if they're not being used. The process script block will execute one time for each object that is piped into the function, and that object will be automatically placed into the dollar sign underscore placeholder. This function can be converted into an advanced function, or script commandlet, fairly easily. In the first step, we'll define the parameters that the function can support. This is done using a special commandlet binding section, where we not only define the parameters, but also their attributes. For example, this parameter has been declared as accepting string input, and it accepts either input directly via the parameter, via pipeline input by value, and via pipeline input by property name. Below are three examples of how that parameter can be used. First, by passing a value directly to the parameter. Second, by piping a string object, the value that the parameter accepts, into the function. Third, by piping in an object that has a property name that matches the parameter name. In all three cases, the values will be attached to the parameter within the function and not to the dollar sign underscore placeholder. When multiple objects are piped in, the process script block will execute once for each one, so you don't have to enumerate those objects on your own. Other parameter attributes include marking the parameter as mandatory, and there are even simple data validation attributes that can be used. Here, for example, we've designated a list of acceptable values for this parameter, which will help ensure that only valid input is passed to the parameter. The shell will ensure that only a value from this list is accepted, so we don't need to do our own validation. Here's the help topic that explains more about these parameter attributes. Finally, back in our example, you can see here how the special comments are used to define help information for this function. These sections correspond to the sections displayed in a normal commandlet's help. For more information on using these, review the About Comment-based help topic in PowerShell. There's one other great trick you can use in a script commandlet or advanced function, and that's adding support for the dash what if and dash confirm parameters. These are parameters supported by any commandlet that makes changes to the operating system. And if your function makes changes, then you should support them as well. All you have to do is indicate in your function definition that you support the should process technique. You specify your impact on the system as either low, medium, or high, which are just rough relative descriptions of how severe your change will be. The shell's built-in confirm preference variable will automatically trigger the dash confirm functionality if your confirm impact is higher or equal to the confirm preference. Users can also manually trigger the functionality by using the dash what if or dash confirm parameters of your function. Although you do not declare those parameters yourself, they're there automatically. Then, within your commandlet, locate any commands that are going to modify the system. Wrap those in a condition statement, as shown here, that calls the underlying should process function. You'll notice that you provide a reference to whatever object you're about to modify, which could be a computer name, a service, or whatever. If the function was asked to confirm either by the user or by the shell's confirm preference, then this will take over and make that happen. You don't need to do anything else. Here's an example of running this function with both what if and confirm parameters. Finally, advanced functions have full support for the common parameters, 
and you don't need to do very much to take advantage of them. These parameters include verbose, error action, and error variable. These don't get declared along with the rest of your parameters. The shell adds them to your function automatically and internally. Error action and error variable are handled automatically too. To support the verbose parameter, simply use write verbose within your function, as shown here, whenever you want to create verbose output. If your function is run with the verbose parameter, then that output will be displayed. If your commandlet is run without the verbose parameter, then the output will normally be suppressed automatically. So you can see that a complete advanced function can indeed look and behave much like a real commandlet. Next, you'll even see how they can be bundled up and distributed in modules, making them easier to share and to reuse between colleagues and coworkers.